Hi everyone, I have a very special guest today. I was uh, last weekend at NFT Expoverse in LA and I saw that they had highlighted younger voices. So I came across Teresa's work, who's a 13 year old artist and the creator of Ava Romana. She has been also speaking at NFT NYC and had one of her works or multiple of her works featured uh, in their marketplace. She is pursuing a passion of hers and with the support um, we would love to hear, you know, what what her as a kind of a representative of her generation is thinking about what she wishes would change uh, in, in, the, in the beginnings of the Web3 era to provide a more safe and great space for artists um, to flourish in the, in the next generation. And I'll have Teresa spend a few minutes first introducing herself and then we'll get off with a lively discussion. Hi, cool. Teresa. Hello, um, thanks uh, for that like small introduction. So yeah, I'm Teresa Melvin and 13 year old NFT artist, uh, creator of Ava Mona, which is about my two characters, Ava and Ramona. And uh, it's, yeah, <laughs> um, and I'm from Texas. Now tell me, when did you, when did you start playing around with software tools, how did you start to be able to create art beyond just drawing on a piece of paper? Um, I started digital art even before I knew it, what NFTs were. Um, I just, I always loved drawing on paper, but when I was nine years old, um, I kind of discovered uh, Procreate um, and I wanted to learn, like I was so interested in how other people drew all these amazing like effects and uh, um, art in digital apps. So I wanted to try it out. And for the first couple of months, it was frustrating, but <laughs> I really got used to it and I had so much fun with it. So now I always create, well, most of the time I create uh, my two original characters, Ava and Ramona. And now I make my digital art as NFTs. So it's been uh, four years now that I've created digital art, but I've always wow. loved drawing. So tell me how you learned Procreate. Yeah, um, well, I learned Procreate when I was like nine years old. Um, like uh, I just saw some like videos on YouTube and I just saw like different videos everywhere. And I, I just wanted to like try something new because I'm I wasn't that great at like digital drawing and everything. And it took a lot of practice, but I it was it was just really interesting how like there's a lot of different like effects and um things that you can do so i i got a lot of inspiration from like the graphic novel artists that i love to read and uh the art i see in youtube videos uh that are like digital so yeah so did you start reading the novels before you said this looks like fun i wanted to create something like this and what were those novels? Um, yeah, um, I've I've loved graphic novels for like a long time now because I love seeing uh, like I love reading stories and I love listening to stories, but I also love like um, seeing the art uh, behind the stories. So graphic novels were really interesting to me, and um, I love reading like realistic fiction graphic novels like about like kind of things that relate to me. Um, and some graphic novels that I really love are, um, one of them is called Real Friends. And the second book is called Best Friends. And the third book is called Friends Forever. So these three books are about um, the author's childhood. Um, and the illustrator is Lewin Pham. And I'm, I'm really inspired by how like loose her drawing style is uh, and she doesn't care about the imperfections. It just, just looks really interesting and yeah. So what do um, like your classmates think about the fact that you're in NFTs and creating art? Um, well, um, my some of my uh, classmates, some of them in my science class when I was in seventh grade, they knew about like, what that I uh, made NFTs because of my science teacher actually. Um, 
my my friends didn't really know about nfts that or that i made nfts but like how would that happen that my science teacher knew about it was i told my science teacher i was going to be away for a few days because i'm going to i was going to miami nft week and she was just really interested that i was into nfts and she wanted to know more about like the art i do and she was just a really nice teacher and i could like just talk to her a lot about like what i do and one time um she shared it with the whole class my whole science class and um well at first i was just like um surprised cuz not many people know that i like make nfts or i'm into this sort of thing they just know that i love drawing art so yeah um and when my students not my students my classmates <laughs> almost knew, you'll get there one day <laughs> yeah <laughs> when my classmates like um figured it out um and when my science teacher told them they were like really interested in it and like sometimes they'll be like oh you're in nfts that's cool like they won't really know about nfts but it's really cool that they think that it's cool about what i'm doing <laughs> does it matter to you what you, what they think about it or do you feel like um, oh this is something i need to like not tell them about or how do you feel um it's not that i don't want to tell people that i make nfts um i just don't usually like tell uh my friends or my classmates that i make nfts cuz i'm just really bad at explaining things and explaining nfts is like there's it's there's a lot to it so it, it's uh kind of hard for me to explain to my friends but um it's really interesting when you meet a person that um uh, knows about it so it's just like really easy to talk to so yeah um not many people outside like this nft space um that i'm friends with and my uh parents uh, other than like these people they don't really know that i make nfts like in my school except for some people <laughs> so tell me about your project yeah um i'm making a project called ava ramona um i did say it's about like my two characters ava and ramona and i made these characters um a few years ago and what it is is ava is like a really bubbly cute character and she loves donuts and her best friend is ramona do you love donuts <laughs> i used to love donuts <laughs> I, i still love donuts but i used to be obsessed with donuts and when i created ava and ramona is ava's best friend and she loves skateboarding she's like very bold um uh, and she does what things she or oh, what she thinks is right so these two bffs are really my main focus when it comes to art um and making nfts and ava ramona is um going to be a pfp project and when you collect the pfp what's uh, what's pfp for people that don't know it's like a profile picture so it's going to be a generative collection and um i'm working on the traits right now and it's there it's going to be like really colorful and it's going to be really fun and it's going to be traits uh for these two characters in this collection and i i have a lot planned for this project cuz uh in this project i really want to like make the main focus for like kids and parents um and when you collect one of my pfps i'm planning to make this ava ramona academy sort of thing so they'll get access to um like different like tutorials and stuff like that so i really want to like educate and teach other kids about digital art and the tools i use and basically whatever i learn i want to share so through this project they'll kind of get uh that so yeah <laughs> so what would what do you want to teach them what will they get So if I buy a NFT from Ava and Ramona what what should I expect? When you buy an NFT um well some part will go to a charity to support kids education so I'm still uh working on like I'm just still planning everything and 
Uh, you will also get access to like um, different tutorials that I'll make and I'm still planning those as well. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> I, I really want the like, um, I really want like people, mostly like just uh, kids to learn about what I, uh, like the things that I do, if that makes sense, like different tools and digital drawing and art in general. <laughs> Why is that important to you? Um, it's it's just really important to me that other kids uh, like know how about this because I I really want to like pave the way for uh, kids to be able to do what they want for their future. And since I'm I'm teaching like art and I'm teaching the different tools I use because I really want to help other kids um, who are maybe like experimenting with that or they they really want uh, a, a, fu a future that they're passionate about if that makes sense why is it important for you to teach um teaching is just i i real teaching is just my passion and it's for, first of all it's just really fun for me because even when I was in elementary school um in recess I would like get my sketchbook and um, I would get my friends and I would teach them how to draw different characters and they really enjoyed that. And they kept asking me like um, if they could like learn more. So it was really happy for me to see that um, I'm I'm like making other people, I'm, I'm like affecting other people in a good way. Like I'm, yeah. <laughs> That's really great. Um, so I wanted to talk with you about like the whole state of the ecosystem. So I've been running my business for 10 years. Um, I'm a female entrepreneur. I've we've obviously faced a lot of battles in building my company. And so I've been looking a lot about, you know, what are kind of business leaders doing in the next phase to uh, elevate their communities or to make it more fair for people to join. I, we at Scopio manage more than 20,000 artists that upload their images on Scopio's website and they sell them. Um, and they also get hired on their various visual art skills. So the idea is to make people money wherever they are around the world and let them tell their authentic story. So many of our, so much, some of our stories actually ended up in this book that's now number one on Amazon. Um, and it has 200 stories from around the world of people uh, surviving COVID and uh, all the different things that we went through during 2020. So I care a lot about obviously keeping things authentic and um, true to who people are. So when I look at Web3, I feel like, I don't know if this is something that I would want, like it, it's not going for me in the direction that I would like given all of the advancements that have happened in society. I would love for, from your perspective, what a positive outcome would look like for you and for others as this is developing. So let's say the next five years, the next 10 years, the next 20 years, like what do you think about this ecosystem and what would you really want to see like people like me or other big tech like leaders, what do you want us to do to make it a better space for you and the generation coming up? Um, so I, I really love this Web3 space and this NFT space uh, because it, it gives people a way, um, especially like people who are like creators, um, that the, it, it paves the way for their like career. And um, yeah, <laughs> I, it gives more exposure to like their work and what, how they want to affect the future and how they want to affect the world. So um, it, in the Web3 space, you can connect with a lot of different people. And even from really far away, from different parts of the world, you can connect with these people. And you can let people know about your project. And you can really see um, the growth from before entering the Web3 space or the NFT space. And then after it. Because for me, um, it really extended my uh, view of like, um, all these like different new things that I'm learning. So another plus side is you're learning 
many things on the way on your growth and your journey. Uh, so Web3 has, uh, the NFT space has really uh, helped me and it's, yeah, uh, now it's like got me a way where I know it's possible for me to um, teach other kids about art and become an artist and an art teacher and really get people to know about my project. Um, so yeah, and what I really want to see in this space um, is for the younger generation to come in and I, I really want them to make the future uh, because, because for me, that's what important and that's what I'm focusing on. So I, I really want to focus it where um, it's a safe space for kids as well, because there's not many safe spaces for kids when uh, things are built for adults. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> so how can people like me make it more safe for kids? Um, I, I would say like, I, I would say supporting um, other kids' projects and uh, what they do and just uh, inviting them to connect with you, if that makes sense. Uh, like right now, I'm I'm really honored to be in this um, uh, discussion with you, and I I really love your uh, project as well. Um, and yeah, if if you like keep doing this with a lot of other people, including like kids as well, it's really going to like change the way that people see kids in this space. So, yeah. Why do you think we haven't been able to include kids in any, like, like where do you see it? Where do you see kids not included right now? Um, I, I would say, um, like, well, right now there's a lot of like kids who are entering the space, and I, but not a lot of adults in this space think that they're meant to be here, uh, just because like we're younger than um, a lot of people. But really, it's like the right time um, and it's it's the right place for like people, I mean, for kids to like start discovering new things and uh, yeah. <laughs> Is there anything about Web3 that you don't like or about the NFT space that you wish you could change? Um, well, actually, I, I don't think so right now because it's it's it's. It's going good. Um, I really love the NFT space, and I I just really love how like how like drastic my life has been uh, since entering it. So I, other than that, I don't really have any complaints except for sometimes it's hard to like manage my time being on social media and going to school uh, because like my school starts soon, so I'll have to find some time to, you know draw more and uh, like connect with people and on social media and stuff so <laughs> yeah do you ha join any do you have any discord spaces that you like are you allowed to be on that yeah um i since i'm like working on this project i uh really want to start using discord more because i don't really i didn't really use discord at all i didn't really know how to use it or um, any of that, but I'm I'm slowly like getting into Discord and I'm learning about Discord as well. So, um, well, I, I there's cool cats. I really love uh cool cats and uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I forgot what, what other um, what other social media do you like? What where do you like to spend uh, your time on social media? And what do, what are your kind of rules around it? Do you have house rules that your parents set for you? Uh, well, I'm on Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. So I'm on there a lot. And my dad uh, like moderates like all my social media accounts and uh, whatever's on my social media, he looks over that. And before like I respond to any messages, he will look at the messages and he will respond like to messages with me. Um, cause some, yeah. sometimes I don't know, like the people who are messaging me and yeah. yeah. Um, so my dad do, uh, does like moderate, uh, my social media accounts. Um, and I, I love to like create posts with him 
and I love to like comment on other kids um, projects. So I can just comment on other uh, posts, but um, comment like messaging other people and making posts, uh, I do it with him. So yeah. What are a few other kids projects that you like? Um, I, well, I really love uh, Nyla's, uh, Nyla collection, uh, long neckies, <laughs> but I also love girlies. Um, so Go girlies is by uh, Valeria. And I actually met Valeria when I was in NFT NYC and in, um, and, and in NFT Expover. So yeah, um, Girlies is a really good project because, uh, the, first of all, the quality is really good and the color palette is just beautiful. And Valeria is um, a really nice person as well. Um, so I, I connected with her and uh, I'm friends with her now. And we were planning to do like Twitter spaces together and we already uh, made one Twitter space. So yeah, I would suggest Girlies. <laughs> Would you ever consider having one of her characters in your, um, in your like scenes? In my scenes? Like you have your, your two friends, would you ever consider partnering with another kid that has created another character and having their work, like bringing their character into your world? Um, maybe like something like that. Um, I, well, I want to like, keep my project as Ava Ramona, but I really do this um, like PFP collection that I'm making. Um, like the, the Ethereum that I get when people collect my work, I want to support other kids by like collecting their work. Um, and yeah. <laughs> have you have you bought any other kids work? Yeah, um, I, I've bought um, like I've bought a lot of NFT so far and yeah. <laughs> so how do, if I, if I wanted to start looking at the kids space and who, where would I start? You think I would start looking at the long neckies and girlies and your project. And then I would, how else would I be able to find other kids work? Is there like a section on OpenSea or where is that um, information for people? Um, I'm not aware that there's like a kids section on OpenSea or anything, but I do know that I'm in this like amazing community and it's called NFT Kids Magazine. So they're on Instagram and Twitter and the founder, um, she has a whole community of kid artists and mm -hmm. they're giving us a lot of opportunities, a lot of ways to like display our work. And they're connecting us with other people. And I've met a lot of kid artists that way. So I also like created their logo, NFT Kids Magazine's logo, Aww. which is, yeah, yeah, it was amazing. And yeah, I would suggest NFT Kids Magazine for you because there's a lot of kid artists in this space and that space. And yeah, on Instagram and Twitter. I'm looking at them now. Cool. <laughs> Where did you make the logo? Um, I, well, I made it on Adobe Fresco. And does your do your parents know these platforms? Are they able to help you with Adobe and setting up on Procreate, or have you had to learn all your on your own? Oh, um, I haven't had to learn on my own because uh, my parents helped me with that as well. And they're also artists, and my mom's also Very an good. artist and art teacher. Um, so yeah. All these platforms um, and like they also know it too but they would say that I know a lot more than um, them because I do <laughs> a lot more digital artworks so I'm I'm learning like all these different tips and tricks on like Procreate and I, I mainly use Procreate but I use like Adobe Fresco sometimes for logos or something so yeah. And do you do this all on the computer or do you use some on your phone or on your parents' phone? Um, like the Procreate and all the other. Yeah, I use or is them that on, on an iPad. I use that on an iPad Pro and I use like an Apple Pencil to draw it. And same with Adobe Fresco? Yeah. Yeah, so I do all two... my drawing in that. Perfect. So those are two things you would recommend? 
uh, for ki other kids if they wanted to get started? Those are the two platforms. Uh, well, well, um, well, I would say like Procreate uh, if, if you want to do like a lot more illustrations and everything. So I use Procreate a lot. So <laughs> I would suggest Procreate and I'm, I'm going to be like giving some tutorials and stuff on YouTube. Yeah. So there's going to be a lot of like tutorials for Procreate and everything um, in the future. And I already have a YouTube live about like uh, using Procreate to draw someone. So yeah. <laughs> I suggest Procreate, so, it's really good. So how can they find you and then keep up with you and look at your tutorials for those that are listening? Um, well, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn as Teresa Melvin Art, and also um, as Ava Ramona. And I have a YouTube channel called Teresa Melvin. Um, so you can check that out. <laughs> Thank you, Teresa. This has been so interesting for me. I've learned a lot and I have so many ideas now. I can't believe, now that I'm thinking about it, I can't believe there isn't a kids section on any of these platforms. So um, there's a lot of work that business leaders should be thinking about. And I want to thank you and your family so much for this great opportunity to um, teach others about you and um, your work. Thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me up here um, and sharing my stories. And I also want to mention, I have a new website now um, called avaramona.art. So anybody who wants to check that out, you can. <laughs> and yeah. Great. And, and if you. there's one, one more advice, we like I like to leave this with an advice. If you have one quick advice for everybody, what would it be? Don't be afraid to step in and uh, talk about yourself and don't don't be afraid for people to hear your voice is what I'd say. Oh, thanks, Teresa. Thank you. I'm Christina, the CEO at Scopio. Thanks for tuning in. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Scopio Images. Head over to Scopio, S-C-O-P.io for access to the world's largest library of authentic images. Scope them out. And if you're a photographer, don't forget to sign up to get the world to use your diverse images. Thanks and see you next week.